and my first impression when I walked in was like, wow, I'm walking into MoMA, but this is in someone's home. Hello, I'm Laura Daw. Welcome to Artland. Today we're gonna to be talking to Susanna Rosenstock. She is the director of Art Toronto, which is Canada's oldest and biggest art fair. She's gonna help us figure out what an art fair is, what's different at Art Toronto this year, and what's different since she's been the director. Also, how do you become the director of an art fair? I don't know, yet. Most large art fairs are held in convention centers or convention center type buildings. You know, some of the cooler younger ones are held in more industrial type spaces. How are you making it work and, and what do you need? Well, it's a massive open space. I mean, we have 180,000 square feet of open, uninterrupted space. The convention center has, you know, the sides basically are garage doors that open up completely and you can drive a 53-foot tractor trailer literally onto the floor where the art fair is to unload all the, the walls and lights and crates and everything that you need. We don't rent the convention center for a month. You know, we yeah. have three days to build this fair. So. You build it in three days? We build it in less than three days actually. Where do the walls come from? It's the like because we think about the art like you think about the art you think about the galleries but there's something like you're there's an art to the fact that this whole space is being built as well and there's and so many things. And it has to be built beautifully right? The, I mean the booths are meant to look like you're meant to feel like you're in an art gallery so they're they're white cubes generally they're very pristine walls they're very tall walls and they have to be strong so they can support artwork as well you can't hang art on cardboard so um, you really are building this city. Susanna has been the director of Art Toronto for two years. How has it changed in that time? Um, it's an institution, you know, it's hard to come in and leave your own personal mark. So what exactly is that for her? The space is one of the first things that we tackled when I took on the role of director. I had always found that there was, in some ways it wasn't working, that people always said that they got so tired walking through the fair that they couldn't find certain booths, that they didn't make it to the end of the fair. They were just exhausted by it. It felt maze-like. So we hired an architect, which is, you need somebody to rethink your space. You hire an expert in space. He's from Toronto originally, and we visited art fairs together and walked through and kind of decided like, this works, this doesn't work. Let's try and bring this into art fair. And he created, I think, a much more user-friendly space. So he, he thought of the art fair as a city, and a city has neighborhoods, and it has parks, and it has open space, and we needed that too. So that's what we added to make the space better. Okay, but how does someone become the director of Canada's biggest and oldest art fair? Um, let's work backwards with Susanna. So before she was the director, she was the director of VIP relations, the person who makes sure that all the collectors and heavy hitters that are coming into town get to do fun things and want to come to Art Toronto when there's so many other art fairs they could be going to. But how do you get that job? Before that, she was the private art advisor for a very wealthy person's art collection and got to make huge choices about like very amazing pieces of work. There was one, one Rothko in particular, one that was like a very, very deep purple and black. It was very hard to find the right space to hang it because of the light, because Rothkos need a certain type of light or else it sort of disappears, right? So you need just the right amount, but not too much. You don't want to reveal exactly, you know, everything in the painting, but you need to be able to see that the different colors and the different layers. So just sort of, if you, you know, if I got to steal a moment alone in this living room with this Rothko, it's pretty incredible. You don't usually get to be alone with these kind of pieces, so. But how'd she get that job? <laughs> she did a similar job as advisor for corporate art collections before that, but how'd she even do that? It all started out when she was in high school. She loved art, she loved making art, and she was looking into going to college, and she saw that art history was a degree, you could major in art history, and she was like, if that's what you can do, then obviously that's what I want to do. And she did, and she never looked back. I have a pretty cool job. I have one of those jobs that people don't know is a job, really. I think all the jobs actually I've ever had, if you had asked me five years before I had them, I didn't know that they were jobs and that's something you could do. So what have we got here? So this piece is by Max Gomez Canley. He's an Argentinian artist, and he had a project at the art fair last year, which is how I became familiar with his work. I didn't know it before, but he came to the fair, and he installed his project, and he had a series of drawings as well as paintings, 
And I, I spent sort of the week hanging out with him and some of the other artists and I got to really know him and I found that you know, he lived in Buenos Aires. We are exactly the same age. We had children the same age and I sort of spent a lot of time with him and with the other artists and that made me more interested in the work. I think if you, if you know the artist or know something about them, it draws you into it more. So art fairs are really changing the art world. You know, an artist doesn't just make a show for a gallery anymore. There's art fairs everywhere and they're proliferating like crazy and there's been criticism that it's affecting the way that art is made and that it's detrimental to the artist and their process. I was curious what Susanna thought about that. I do feel like Art Toronto is in a way a special situation because we're the only fair in Canada. We don't necessarily have the galleries who are doing 20 fairs a year, these major, major galleries in our fair, so I don't think there's that much repetition, but I know it is it is an issue for the relationship between the galleries and their artists if the artists have to churn out work simply for an art fair so a collector can come grab it off the wall. That's not the same as making art for an exhibition that's going to get pressed and that's going to be in a catalog or something like that. So um, it is an issue and there are a lot of art fairs right now. There certainly are. Like I said, we're, we're unique because we're the only one in Canada, so I think that gives us a special position. Okay, two big takeaways for me. Art fairs. I'm always looking at the art on the walls. I'm not thinking about the art of the walls. Um, and all the planning that goes into making, as Suzanne, it's a beautiful city of galleries. And two, how many jobs are there in the art world that I don't know are jobs? Susanna had like seven of them. Um, so maybe tons. We'll find out. See you next Artland.